All right, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good morning to a few out here along the West Coast. It is the Earthmaster here on the end of this weekend. Sunday, September 24th, 2023. It's about 11.41 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 1.3 up into the Alaska region. Also looks like a 4.8 earlier this morning into a portion of the Aleutian Trench. Looking at the last 24 hours here of earthquake activity across the globe by the USGS and also the EMSC data uh, showing some movement across the globe, mainly scattered out here across the Indonesia region, stretching up in a portion of the Java Trench just off the coast here of Sumatra. This area has been uh, somewhat heightened over the last couple days. Watch for potential further movement along this area of the plate boundary. 5.1 from yesterday and also a 4.8 here overnight. But again, we got uh, a few smaller Quakes there in the mix, listed on the globe. Around the Maluka Sea area as well, Banda Sea, all showing some seismic activity. Let's see what we got for the rest of the model out here. A little bit of movement out into this rift zone. I believe this was from last night. Uh, actually, it looks like we've seen another one here this morning, 4.5. Uh, near the uh, Rwanda area. Of course, this is a rift zone that stretches across a good portion of the area. A little bit of movement up into the uh, Mediterranean region as well. Most of this movement here from last night. handful of smaller quakes being listed today up on the Earthquake 3D globe. It looks like around eastern Afghanistan showing some uh, uh, deeper movement quakes as well. Let's see what else we got for the California region. Anything major going on here? I don't think so. Uh, let's check up north here into the Pacific Northwest. handful of smaller quakes. Uh, most of these are from yesterday. The latest one, though, shows a 2.4 well inland over here around Idaho. Uh, for Northern California, a little spotty movement throughout the last 24 hours, including some activity from yesterday. Really, really haven't seen too much activity today so far. Been somewhat eerily quiet in terms of earthquake activity. Scattered movement here across the Bay Area, just off the plate boundary and also along the along a section here of the Calaveras fault zone did see a uh, 2.7 yesterday but today goodness I, today's just a little bit different a little quieter out here across the Pacific Northwest and uh, the West Coast in general Yellowstone National Park let's double check that out real quick here and see what we have as uh, far as movement goes and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of earthquake activity here on this seismograph station maybe one maybe a couple small ones in the last hour or so but for the most part seismic activity at Yellowstone remains quiet not a whole lot going on through the portions of the southern plains either one earthquake around the New Madrid seismic zone from yesterday but goodness where's all the earthquake activity it looks quiet out here <laughs> not even joking uh, the Big Island Hawaii taking a break there from volcanic activity no major changes to take note of there across the Kilauea Volcano or the Mauna Loa region for now. Uh, getting some deeper activity down here into the Fiji area. The latest one shows a 4.4, 614 kilometers deep. So with that activity in mind, keep an eye on the plate boundary here. That should add further strain across that region. Just generally makes sense here with that northwestward pressure movement. And you can kind of see the areas that are lacking seismic activity here in the last 24 hours that includes portions of the solomon islands and uh, vanuatu area but i think papua new guinea here is one of our more quiet zones here at least in terms of recent activity not a whole lot going on up in japan uh, things look fairly quiet for the most part did see some earthquake activity yesterday and it looks like one more today 4.6 just off the coast of tokyo into the uh, southern edge here of the japan trench uh, let's check out the uh, GeoNet servers, see what we got uh, for the New Zealand area. Three hours ago, 2.7. That looks like it's around Taupo Super Volcano. Looks like they may be having a swarm over there. There's a 3.1 as well, so I'm kind of curious about that. Let's check out that uh, Volcano Drums. It's been a while since we've seen any uh, significant swarming there at Taupo, but it looks like that's starting to kick back up here few earthquakes being reported the ones that i just mentioned there on the geonet servers here 
in about the last 10 or 12 hours or so. Not a huge swarm, but definitely a little bit of uptick there across that super volcano. That looks like that is the specific epicenter of that, um, that activity. So we we'll continue to watch that there at Taupo super volcano. Looks like the largest, so 3.1 in that mix about three hours or so ago. All right, what do we got for space weather? Anything major going on? Well, we do have quite a few sunspots that are currently facing us. And the likelihood of seeing a, a large flare still exists. 99% certainty of a C flare, M flare at 60, X flare remains elevated at about 15% chance. And uh, most of those probabilities are coming off. A couple earth facing side sunspots here with 34, 45. It's gonna be this area right here. Notice this region has uh, grown in the past couple days it is still fairly dynamic look at this intermixing of uh colors i mean that's fairly complex within this system within this sunspot uh, so i think we'll watch this pretty closely also region up here still somewhat complex uh and it looks like maybe around the northwestern limb of the sun these have been popping off some sea flares here recently uh, they look fairly complex but they will be facing away from earth here in the next day or so uh, main threats are going to be these ones that are currently facing us and around the eastern limb there's not a whole lot coming around the bend there's really not a whole lot of potential uh, for some you know new sunspots it looks pretty quiet over there but again we'll continue to watch that there is our uh, active regions here pretty bright uh, again this one's just a uh, dynamic looking one i think this one's going to pop off uh, something large here soon. I, w I would be surprised if it didn't. All right, uh, what else we got? No major, it doesn't look like that G1 class storm ever materialized here. We were They were forecasting it last night and the night before. Well, that missed us completely. Sometimes these solar weather events, you know, they're kind of hard to, hard to forecast, probably even more so than weather. But we'll continue to watch that, see if anything does get enhanced here in the coming days. All it would take is a pretty massive CME from one of these Earth-facing side sunspots, and that will change drastically. Uh, as far as solar cycle 25 progression, taking a little dip down from our observed uh, sunspot number. We did peak out here. Taking a little dip down, but that will probably spike back up with this recent activity uh, that we've seen here in the past few days. But we're still ahead. We're still ahead of the predicted line that you know that the space weather prediction center here put us in uh, for solar cycle 25 which maximizes out in june 2025 and then it starts going down into solar minimum uh, so we're still ahead in terms of you know what we're observing compared to their prediction so we'll continue to watch that it's been it's been active but we've missed we've dodged quite a few flares here recently all it takes is just being in the right well, well in this case the wrong spot at the wrong time i mean that could have some effects here on earth if we do see a you know a large x flare and subsequent cme all right storm prediction center here today slight risk for some severe weather looks like april uh, across portions here of texas big huge area uh two percent chance of tornado probability around long uh, longview rockwall paris greenville and marshall texas little portion of Oklahoma as well. I don't think uh, Ardmore is in there, but close to it. Uh, wind and hail threats. Texas always gets those big time hail threats out there. And that looks like it's going to be the main severe weather threat out here today across Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, Arlington, and Plano, Texas. It looks like that includes uh, many, many areas other than those regions. But uh, we're looking at population density here, of over 10 million people. Uh, that are in that severe potential. And we're talking about potentially large, very large, two inch plus in some cases uh, across those regions today. So keep an eye out as uh, far as the, the current radar map. Let's go ahead and look at this. I got to show you guys this here in a minute. This is pretty awesome. Looks like some huge tropical cyclone, cyclone coming, but it's not. It's just a deep low pressure system. Um, satellite view not satellite i wanted to go to uh, weather radar here we go it looks like storms have not quite fired up yet in this area it looks like they may be just getting ready to uh, a little bit of storming down here in the south 
but uh, for the most part, we're waiting until afternoon, early evening time period for these uh, thunderstorms to start brewing up there into the Texas region. All right, now the other thing here, let's check out these massive, this massive low pressure system out here. We got winds around it, about 82 miles per hour wind gust. And this thing is massive, man. Huge system going to bring in quite a bit of rainfall here to the Pacific Northwest. I just wish it was centered a little bit closer to California. That would be an awesome, almost like a bomb cyclone type of deal here. We've got a very strengthening low pressure system. And throughout the day today, that's only going to get a little bit stronger and uh, inch its way closer to the Pacific Northwest. I mean, look at some of these uh, wind gusts, 80 miles an hour or so. That's out there, of course, in the Pacific. Off the coast here, it's going to be about 50, 60 mile per hour winds. They do get some pretty strong winds up there into the uh, into that area. But uh, it's going to head north after that, making a, making a little clip over here across the northwest. And then it's going to just head north. Not much for California. In fact, our rainfall totals here uh, in California have dropped off dramatically. Let me show you guys the rain accumulation from the system. Uh, it's it's hitting north. That's what it's doing. Outside of Seattle, they're expecting maybe up to six inches of rainfall here over the next five days. And uh, Northern California out here where I'm at, well, yeah. In fact, our rainfall chances went down to about 10%. I was, I was a little bummed <laughs> looking at this this morning. I was hoping for some rain. Uh, but either way, you know, it'll come eventually, hopefully. Uh, but a lot of rainfall here for the uh, Coast Range. And uh, that's going to um, not continue for too much longer. It looks like model changes are showing a little bit drier conditions out here. Uh, the numerical models across the states. Let's show the uh, symbol here, the GEPS system. Cold pressure or low pressure out here across the Pacific Northwest indicated there in the blue lines very deepening trough of low pressure high pressure major high pressure up here in Canada that thing is just cooking that area and uh, as we put this into motion we got some cooler weather coming up that's for sure so I'm not going to complain about it entirely uh, I would love to see some rain and cooler temperatures but it uh, looks like cooler temperatures will prevail out here through the remainder of September and as we head into October look at this over here goodness that is a blocking ridge across the uh, Canada region. And it doesn't look like it's going away up there. Uh, for the California area here, we're just under the influence of some troughing. A little bit of a strengthening of high pressure system in the first week of October. But it uh, looks like low pressure is going to swing back in and keep us relatively cool into uh, potentially the first half of October. So that's it. Hopefully things are... Uh, Gonna be wet out here for the west coast i'm i'm ready for some rainfall all right folks uh, live stream is back up and running my computer reset about 4 30 this morning i forgot um the windows system here was going to do an update automatically regardless if i have a stream up or not and that's what happened um i forgot to turn up turn off that update and uh, it went ahead and reset and updated itself but oh well it did it in the middle of the morning uh not too many people online i don't think so either way it's up now and I uh, hope everyone enjoys their Sunday and what's left of it. And stay safe out there in the Texas area for today's severe weather threat. Catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Take care, folks.